For the eighth time in nine years, it's Mount Union and Wisconsin Whitewater for the D3 National Championship. It started with back-to-back -back Purple Raider wins in 05 and 06 before the Warhawks captured their first title in 2007. Mount won the next year before Whitewater ripped off three straight, establishing a dynasty of its own. Tonight, it's round eight between the Raiders and the Warhawks. It's the Stag Bowl for the Division Three National Championship right now. Welcome to the 2013 NCAA Division III Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. They're ready to rock in Salem, Virginia. Once again, it's Mount Union and Wisconsin Whitewater for the eighth time in nine seasons, but it was no sure thing this time around. Both these teams with one point wins in the semifinals. Mount Union over North Central, scoring the game's winning touchdown in the final two minutes. And Wisconsin Whitewater on the road beating Mary Harden Baylor after trailing that game 12 to nothing. Now with that, we say welcome inside our broadcast booth. Two-time Super Bowl champ Dave Diaz Infante, Paul Carcaterra down in the field. I'm Joe Davis. 242 teams play Division Three football. Makes that even more incredible that it's been this, these, these two teams eight times out of the last nine years. We know, Dave, that Mount Union, no doubt a dynasty, really unparalleled across college football at any level. This is their ninth consecutive appearance in this game, the 17th in the last 20 years. But... The last three times they've faced Whitewater, they've lost. They're hoping that Kevin Burke, their Gallardi winner at quarterback, and the stuff that he brings to the table can flip that around. Well, Kevin Burke leads the number one offense in the nation. The word coaches use to describe him is poise. He's a great athlete, a dual threat guy that has over 1,000 yards rushing. I tell you what, and he makes great decisions with the football. And he's asked to do a lot, pre-snap and post-snap. Those decisions will be critical for their success here tonight. Well, Wisconsin Whitewater missed out on the playoffs last season at 7-3 and three after three consecutive titles. They're back here largely because of the nation's number one defense. Well, and the quarterback of that number one defense is Cole Klotz. He's 6'4", 240 pounds. He has all the measurables of a D1 player. I tell you what, he can run sideline to sideline. Great football intelligence. He makes all the calls and checks, so he's going to have to get those guys in order to play assignment football against Mount Union. Now for more, let's throw it down to the third member of our crew. Here's Paul Carcaterra. Well, these two Division Three football Goliaths have combined for 15 national championships and are Stag Bowl regulars. But after one-point semifinal victories last week, both coaches, Mount Union's Vince Karras and Whitewater's Lance Leipold, told me their teams exceeded expectations this season, and playing in this game was far from a slam dunk. Mount Union had one starter back on offense and superstar quarterback Kevin Burke, and Whitewater had 47 freshmen on the roster after not making the playoffs a year ago. Common denominators in all this, both coaches applaud the emergence of leaders of their teams and quarterbacks putting up gaudy numbers. All right, Paul, Lance Leipold took over in 2007. He's 28-1 in the playoffs with his only loss coming to the 2008 Stag Bowl, of course, against Mount Union. This is his 100th game, his sixth Stag Bowl out of those 100 contests. On the other sideline is a different Karras, Vince Karras, his father, Larry, and run the program until this season. Larry with the best winning percentage in college football history, but he didn't even win 14 games in his first season like Vince did. Now, Vince has been part of 10 of the 11 national titles, either as a player or as an assistant. He spent the previous 13 years on the staff, last eight as defensive coordinator. Whitewater has a 4-3 edge in the first seven Stag Bowl meetings. They've won three straight against Mount Union in this game. Mount Union's last win against Whitewater was in the 2008 Stag Bowl. How about this? Since the start of the 2006 campaign, Mount Union is 114-4. All four losses coming in the Stag Bowl against Wisconsin Whitewater. You could not ask for a better night for football. I think folks get so used to snow being around for this stag ball in Salem, Virginia, but it is perfect. Mid-50s, light breeze. It's been perfect here all week as these teams have gotten ready to go.
Whitewater, after missing the playoffs last year, trying to win its fourth title in five seasons. Mount Union with its ninth consecutive trip, its 17th in 20 years, trying to make it back-to-back -back titles and a record 12 in program history. Mount Union won the toss and deferred, so it's Whitewater to begin with the ball with Marcus McClinn back with Justin Howard. Lake Bacher, freshman out of Wheaton, Illinois, to kick it off. Started the game clock started running it before this kick. They've got to reset to 15 <laughs> and we're ready to go. Everybody's ready yeah. to go. sends it away and off we go from Salem. Here's Marcus McLenn. McLenn bounces off contact and brings it back to the 25. So that's where Whitewater will begin with this multiple pro style offense. Like some of their matchups outside today, the question will be can the offensive line hold off to give Matt Barron time? Guy that has been really good, overshadowed some because of what the defense has done. But in 432 pass attempts, he's been picked off just once. He's, do, he's done everything you ask your quarterback to do, and that is lead your team, complete the ball, and protect the ball. Against this Mount Union defense that's given up 99 points over the last two weeks. Perhaps more clock issues. Tom Barnett, our head referee today. These teams have been waiting all week to get this started. And a couple clock issues keeping us from getting going. So from the 25, first play of this stag ball. It's Jordan Ratliff with a seam. And Ratliff across the 30. Ran for 100 yards, scored both the Whitewaters' touchdowns and the win over Mary Hart and Baylor last week. He's one of our impact players when Whitewater has the ball. That's right. Look at Jake Kumaro outside at the wide receiver position, Jordan Rat Ratliff at running back. Those guys work and help each other out in terms of running the football and big plays down the field. And Fetchko and uh, Kochev are going to have to control that line of scrimmage and the back half against play action pass. Second down in the yard. And to throw for the first time down the seam, and there's Kumaro with a first down into Mount Union territory. One of the nation's top ten receivers goes for 20 against Josh Scott. Well, it starts with the protection of that young offensive line. Look at that, a clean pocket to throw from, and look at the throw into a tight window to the six foot five Kumaro. 71 catches on the season now. Now Mount Union had to go against a 6-5 wideout last week against Peter Sorensen in North Central. He had 10 catches for 119 and two scores. Big size advantage for Kumaro. From the 46, back to Ratliff. This time Mount Union's ready. Scott up from his safety spot to get his second straight tackle. And it'll be second down at 10. Opening drive for Whitewater. Second down, 11. Barron looking towards single coverage and dumping off the screen to Morris. Ran away from Chambers to get seven and set up a third down and short. I 
nine yards, so third and two. The one thing Mount Union has done well on defense this season has been third down, 11th in the nation on third down. Barrett to throw on third and short, and it's Morris for a first down. Morris takes it up to the 26. Nick Spencer with a tackle on a pickup of a dozen. You know, the coaches talk about Matt Barrett's arm, and you'll see how fast this ball comes out on third down. Another tight window, accurate right to Steve Morris for the third down conversion. Barron has completed all three of his throws so far. Ratliff steps out of a tackle, and Ratliff has eight yards up to the 17. Ratliff was contacted in the backfield and stepped out before Scott Meyer brought him down. Well, Jordan Ratliff has really emerged as the guy that's made their offense tick. He's really a volume run. The more carries he gets, the better he does, and you see his ability to break tackles. Barrett to the end zone, touchdown! Jake Kumaro with his 18th score of the season. And what a start for Whitewater. You'll see Matt Barron too. Boy, he is throwing on time and in on rhythm. The extra point from Kindler's good. Coach Leipold's team with an efficient opening drive. They go 75 yards in seven plays. Mount Union's defense, which has given up 99 points over the last two games. Picks up right where it left off. You couldn't have asked for a better starting drive in a national championship game. A good mix of running the football and throwing the football. That's just how you script it right there. The Barrett, with that confidence peaking, he's got more and more comfortable. Moved into the starting role midway through last year. And Andy Kotelnik, the first-year offensive coordinator, said especially during the last six weeks or so, Aaron has really come a long ways. There's Andy Kotelnik, first season at Wisconsin Whitewater. He's bounced around the collegiate ranks for a dozen years as a college assistant. They got two opposite personalities there in the booth as coordinators with Coach Kotelnicki and Coach Borland, the D coordinator. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they, got, they got both ends covered right there. Hargrove and Meacham back. This would be Meacham. <laughs> Mount Union will begin at the 23 yard line with the nation's top offense, led by the Gallardi Award winner, Kevin Burke. First junior ever to win the award. Sixth player from Mount Union to do it. Junior out of Westlake, Ohio is 29-0 as a starter. 44-0 as a starter if you go back to his senior year at St. Edward in high school when he beat Braxton Miller in the state championship game. From the 24. Play action. Coverage downfield is good. And Burke's going to get sacked back inside the 25. It's the MVP of the 2011 Stag Bowl. Luminat with a sack. Well, that's a covered sack. Look at the secondary of Whitewater. Nowhere to go with the football. The protection eventually breaks down, and it's Lou Minette on the sack. That's been the biggest issue for Mount Union in the three straight losses to Whitewater here in the Stag Bowl. 12 sacks in those three games. Their hope is that Kevin Burke is the guy athletic enough to avoid those kind of numbers. Steps into a competent throw, and his first completion goes to Brian Gaynor. Sophomore from Tampa, Florida, who's been banged up to the playoffs. 
taking it across the 30, 30 short. Well, you know Kevin Burke's not going to flinch. Watch him stand in the pocket and deliver the football outside. Protection holds up that time. Top third down offense in the country at 57 percent against the number six third down defense in Whitewater. First run play gets blown up. Cole Klotz, the conference player of the year. The only Gavardi finalist on the defense. Lights up B.J. Mitchell, and it's fourth down. We talked about Cole Klotz's instincts. Watch him just shoot the gap right there. It opens up, and watch him high tackle. That's knowing the formation, recognizing who has the football in the mesh point of the quarterback and the running back, and attacking the line of scrimmage. And for the first time in 15 games, Mount Union is held out of the end zone in its opening possession. Nation's top defense wins the first matchup between number one all and number one D. Good line drive punt from Lake Bocker. Bounces down to the 25. How about the start for Wisconsin Whitewater back in the title game after missing the playoffs? Up 7 0 with a ball when you come back. Hi, this is John Grude of Monday Night Football. I was a backup Division III quarterback. Not a lot of memorable days, but I promise you, there's some great players and great efforts that are about to take place as you get ready to watch a Division III National Championship game on ESPNU. Don't miss it. Former Dayton Flyer while they were a Division III program. It's Whitewater and Mount Union for the eighth time in nine years. What a start for Wisconsin Whitewater. Kevin Burke and that Mountain Union offense held out of the end zone on their first possession of the game for the first time this year. And Matt Barrett has begun the game five for five. That's a first down to Justin Howard and a pick up a 20 to the 45. And you'll see Matt Barrett watch how quickly he releases the football after the fake to the running back up inside. He knew the scene was open. He had to get the ball there quickly and threw his receiver open. This has been a heck of a start. The junior out of Westchester, Illinois, Matt Barron. He says really embraced the field general role of this offense as he started to get more and more comfortable. First full season as a starter. Just down from the 44. Here's Ryan Gibbons for a solid gain of six as we check in with Paul. You know, Joe, coaches told me this week, Matt Barron's is a great decision maker. They actually give him the liberty at the line to change plays, dissect the defense. And just moments ago, you see him on the sideline interacting with players, teammates, coaches. This kid is dialed in and without question the leader of this offense. Yeah, they give him a lot of leeway at the line of scrimmage. A run play will be called. He'll be able to tag it with a slip screen or bubble screen outside and get themselves into a better play. A lot of shifting and motion by this offense. That was one of the biggest concerns from Mount Union in a short week. Barrett loads up and takes the shot. Watch Kumaro drops it in, but Kumaro drops it. Perfect throw from Matt Barrett. Chambers had solid coverage, but Kumaro had a shot at a big play. The coach has talked about his arm. Not only can he throw it on the line, but it says his touch has improved tremendously. Watch him drop that ball in there. Kumaro, that is uncharacteristic of him. He is a sure-handed wide receiver. Big part of the plan tonight. It's the work against Chambers, who's just 5'9". That's an 8-inch advantage for Jake Kumaro. Third down and four for Wisconsin Whitewater. All 11 men within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Draw play. Ratliff is short. Got two. Fourth down and two. Alex Coach, half leading tackler for this Mount Union defense, makes a stop. The punt team comes out for the Warhawks. And that was Mount Union bringing pressure off the field edge. They're able to stop that draw for a loss. Another Huber back to receive, or Luke Meacham back to receive this punt. First one of the day for Eric Kindler. Sends away a good one. But it takes a 
Mount Union bounce up to the 18-yard line. So Whitewater scores on its opening possession before Stephon here on possession two. Number one offense against number one defense when you come back. The NCAA Division III Football Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA and in part by Wrangler. Real, comfortable, jeans, guarantee. It's about a 12 hour drive down from Whitewater, Wisconsin. Less than that, five and a half from Mount Union in Alliance, Ohio. And how about the turnout? These fans getting used to this trip. Eight time in nine years. These two programs have met here. Let's see how these teams are planning for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Doesn't get much better than the number one offense against the number one defense in the country. Round one, it was the defense that stood tall. That's right. This is the matchup everyone to see. Something has got to give. And early on, it's Whitewater that kind of took the lead so far. Whitewater defense holding opponents under 10 points a game. Mount Union's offense just under 50 points per contest. So this drive with a bubble screen that bounces in there. Jack Nichols thought that it had bounced at least. And then the Whitewater defense rallies and drops him for a loss of five. I think it would have preferred that it had bounced. I'll have a look at this replay. Yeah, that ball skips up to him. There is full replay in this game, and the back judge comes in and whistles this thing down to referee Tom Barnett. The ruling on the field is a catch. The previous play is under review. It's the only Division Three game each year that has a full complimentary replay, being a full television production. And this is actually a big break for Mountain Union. Instead of a loss of four yards on the play, it's going to be an incomplete pass. That ball clearly bounces and scooped up. I mean, that's no fun. It's an incomplete pass, and then Nichols got to get hit by the entire Whitewater defense. Yeah, there were about five or six yeah. guys swarming to him. That's one thing about this Whitewater defense. They swarm to the football. After further review, the pass is incomplete. Second attempt. I tell you what, that was an easy one to change, but they did that quickly. Yeah, they did. You know, for not using they said they, they said replay, typically in Division Three games, heck of a job by our crew there. Get that. Corrected quickly. So second down and ten against Lance Leipold's Whitewater squad. Jack Nichols, their leading receiver. First team all conference performer for this Mount Union squad. Second and ten. To the short side. Second reception for Brian Gaynor. But Marcus McLinn, another first team all conference guy, was right on top of him. In front of this third down and four, we look at our impact players. You see Jack Nichols at wide receiver and Luke Leach are the two receivers for Mount Union. They're big play guys, and the guys that got to help contain them is Lou Manette, get pressure on the quarterback, and Graybold. He's got eight interceptions on the year. He's a playmaker back there, and they are a turnover machine. Union has had somewhat of an issue with turnovers. 25 of them this season. On third down, Bergfield in the pressure. Steps out. And it looks like he's short of the 27. Kyle Wismer, one of the more underrated players on the nation's top defense, brought him down. It's fourth down and a yard. Now the punt team a bit of a concern for Vince Karras' squad. But he'll send him out in front of this fourth down play. Yeah, and you'll see the scramble. Kevin Burke almost able to pick it up as the defensive line collapsed the pocket. Linebackers there to rally. Whitewater's top ranked defense forces a pair of punts on the first two possessions, and Justin Howard goes back for this punt. Drive kick stays away from Howard. That takes a good Purple Raider bounce down inside the 20. So Edward Runke with a heck of a punt there. And Whitewater on offense with a 7 0 lead when we come back.
It worked. You're on TV. <laughs> there you go. Smile. <laughs> Perfect night for football here at Salem, Virginia. Mid 50s for this stag bowl. Whitewater with the ball, and Barrett goes under center from the 16. Ratliff downhill. Ratliff bounces off contact and gets six yards as we check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, Joe, Mount Union head coach Vince Karras just told his defense before they took the field, Whitewater uses motion on every single play. Expect change, and we need to react and communicate quickly. Here's a snap over Barron's head. It bounces away. It's still loose, and Mount Union's got it. First down and goal for the Raiders. Second week in a row, Spencer Shire has had a high snap that turns into excellent field position for the opponent. The freshman center just hangs on to it too long, way over the head of Barron. There's nothing he could do, and the ball took a kind of a funny bounce away from him as he tried to slide to recover it. First big break of the game. The snap last week was over the head of Steve Morris when they were in the Wildcat, turned into a safety, made it 5 nothing. Mary Hart and Baylor. So now Mount Union with a ball at the five-yard line. Burke keeps it. The Gallardi winner has Mount Union on the board with a touchdown. His 14th rushing touchdown of the season, 106th total touchdown of his career. point coming from Edward Runke. He's missed eight extra points this year. That one's perfect. Mount Union takes advantage of the takeaway. One play later, they're in the end zone to tie the game. You'll see the zone read right here. Watch what they do to this defensive end. Kevin Burke does. Reading the mesh point, he's being patient, but watch the speed and athleticism that Kevin Burke has. The stiff arm, he sees the corner, and wide receivers blocking downfield. There it is, he makes the correct read to keep the football, and wide receivers helping him get in the end zone. You know, this is one of the reasons why they went to this offense. They wanted the athletic ability at the quarterback position to stress the defense and some of the better players that they were having problems blocking. See, here's the thing, though. I think that's probably a give read. Manette was there. Burke just outran him, and that's an issue. Yeah. You're going to get Playing outrun. square and shuffling. Exactly. But if you're shuffling, you got to be able to turn back and make that play outside. One of the freshmen of this young offensive line, Spencer Shire, one of two freshmen on the O-line with two sophomores as well. The question coming into this game was how well could they hold up against Mount Union? They've been really good so far. Fortunately for the Warhawks, it's a mistake from their freshman center that leads to Mount Union's first points. Marcus McLean from the five drops the ball and dances around. Gets a couple of blocks and brings it across the 30. Poor start to the play, good finish. Marcus McLean, junior out of Delavan, Wisconsin. That was only the 10th turnover this season, by the way, for this Wisconsin Whitewater team that has a mind-boggling plus 31 turnover margin. Yeah, it is an incredible what they've done in terms of protecting the football and taking away the football on the defensive side of the ball. That's why they're playing in this game. If that holds true here tonight, they find themselves down already. That's one of the biggest indicators of who wins or loses. Who has the ability to protect the football? And can you capitalize on it? Mountain Union did just that. So Whitewater back on offense from the 32. Barrett taking a shot. And good coverage that time. But a flag comes in. Coverage from Trey Jones as he tried to go down the sideline to Tyler Huber. Not at all. Huh. 
pass interference. Number five, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. See, Mount Union brings pressure. They've got the matchup they want outside one-on-one -on -one with Trey Jones. He's in great position. Look at back foot of football. I do not like that call. He's in great position. He bodies up a little bit. Does not restrict the receiver, but he looks back for the football. Tough call. Penalties have been somewhat of an issue for Mount Union. 169th in the country as far as fewest penalties. So first out of the 47. Barrett into the short side. Here's his favorite throws to the sideline. On time and on target to Kumaro for his fourth catch. Ray Jones pushed him out after seven, second and three. You see the velocity with this football comes out of his arm. You'll see Kumaro outside at six foot five. Watch him plant just a little speed out. Nice hands, gloves the ball. But look at the throw. Tight spiral on a rope. Not a very big kid, Barry. Pretty slender, but he's got a cannon. He's got a big target in Kumaro at 6'5. Second down and three. Barrett steps out of pressure. Has room to take off for a first down and shows good speed to submarine to the 35. 11 yards for Barrett, who's gotten better and better at moving in the pocket. Yeah, Barrett isn't known as a great athlete back in the pocket, but he can extend, he can escape. And this is what is the thing he's done so well all year. It's great decision with the football. It's covered, he doesn't force it, he waits as long as he can, and then he heads north and south to pick up positive yards for his offense. He's been dealing with some turf toe. It was a walking boot for a good chunk of the week. Looked pretty decent there, taking off and picking up a first down. Has one on one with Kumar to the bottom of your screen. Instead, gives it off to Ratliff. Makes a cut in that zone scheme. Gets north himself for nine with the arms of Mike Meyer. And it'll be second and one. Watch the offensive line take off. They're going to run wide zone to the right. Kumaro had the ball pop out. They rule it incomplete. Could have gone either way. The back judge, Tom Gillian, comes running in. Signaling incomplete, but Isaiah Chambers jarring it loose. That's a good call. Yeah, that is. That was incomplete. Good call. Nice defense, tight coverage by Isaiah Chambers. So Whitewater looking at a third down and one. Christensen leading the way for Ratliff. He's right at the line to gain. Not getting a terribly good spot. Jonathan Gunnell made the tackle. And it looks like they'll spot him just short. So fourth down and inches for Whitewater. Which has not been good on fourth down this year, converting less than half their tries. Look, that offense wants to go for it, and I, I agree with the decision. Plus territory on the fringe of the red zone. All that movement pre snap. Here's Ratliff sidestepping a man to get a first down. Now keep the drive alive for the guy that entered the season fifth on the depth chart at running back. Watch this. It's just power football, fullback leading, and great vision and cut by Ratliff to head downhill and knew what he was running for. He needed a yard. That was it. There have been some injuries at running back for the Warhawks. Ratliff, the sophomore to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, was fifth on the depth chart, got a chance to play, and is really taking advantage of it, becoming the featured back here down the stretch. Off play action. All kinds of time for Barrett to throw behind Kumarol. And it's second down in town with Meyer in coverage. Some miscommunication between Barrett, his favorite target. Barrett throwing to the corner with Kumarol breaking down the seam. 
Yeah, tried to double move the defensive back right there. They came with a heavy formation. Looked like they're running the football. Tried to work a double move on the outside. Nice coverage by the defensive back for the Mount Union. On second down, Rattler. Not much. Coach F was there with Josh Butler, backup defensive tackle. And it's third down and nine for the Warhawks. That time Ratliff tried to get a little fancy, stopped his feet instead of just making one plant, one cut, and headed north and south. Third and ten. Safety blitz coming. Picked off, giving Barrett time. Into the end zone. Huber! Touchdown, Whitewater! His second title game score. Had one in 2011 and gives the Warhawks the lead in 2013. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Warhawks! On third and long, Mount Union brings zero coverage. Blitz, man to man everywhere. Wow, look at Huber go up and high point the football. A sixth year senior that's finally healthy. He's battled injuries much of his career. Missed most of last season with a broken ankle. Missed time early this year with more injuries. Finally healthy and in the end zone here. Watch, they're going to bring both safeties. He's coming down, and he's going to come down. They'll be locked up, man-to-man -man coverage across the board. And watch the poise of Matt Barrett. Great touch on the football, and a great job of going up and high-pointing the football by Huber. That's competing for the ball. That's when you want to make that catch. Love to see it, and that was tight coverage by Trey Jones. Look, he's just using his size advantage at 6'2 to go up and grab it. Tyler Huber, who led the team in receiving during their last title run in 2011. But again, it's just about all the last season with a broken ankle. Has been banged up much of this year. The staff was really excited that this six-year senior out of North Prairie, Wisconsin, was going to have a chance in his final game to be on the field and make an impact. Yeah, and he was a missing piece of that puzzle. Now that he's healthy, we've got two big-time threats out there. Two big receivers make it difficult to match up on the outside against them. Against two not very big corners. Right. You got Jones who's defending him there, giving up four inches. Line drive kick taken by Jordan Hargrove. <laughs> Hargrove makes a couple of moves and crosses the 25. Josh Williams with the special teams tackle for Whitewater. So Mount Union's offense back to work. The one touchdown came after a snap went over Matt Barron's head for Whitewater and set Mount Union up to the five yard line. This offense has not had much success so far. Only one first down in the first quarter for the nation's number one out. Well, I tell you, that's because they're going against the number one defense in Whitewater. Sets up, heaves one long, and too far for Wilkinson. Well, the SPN's NCAA championship coverage continues tomorrow with the women's volleyball championship. It's Wisconsin knocked off number one Texas last night, meeting Penn State in an all Big Ten final, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2. More information, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Kevin Burke, the nation's most efficient passer. 44 touchdowns, only seven picks this year. Completing 63% of his passes. On second down, they go to the ground with Mitchell. How about that cut? Wasn't much there, but he's able to get three to the arms of Ryan Cortez. 
Making it third and seven with his first quarter winding down. Looks like Mount Union will be content to talk about his third down play during the quarter break. Wisconsin Whitewater, after missing the playoffs last year, trying to win its fourth title in the last five years, and with a 14-7 lead, through with a quarter in the stack bowl. Back in the 2013 NCAA Football Championship from Northwestern Mutual, how about the dominance for these two programs? How about this? 20th anniversary of Mount Union's first title, won by that guy, Larry Karras. Since the start of that 1993 season, they're 271 and 11. So you call dominance. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's a program. That's a process. That's a legacy. This is third down. And Burke's under pressure again. He's Chase, gets rid of it, and gets Wilkinson for a first down. Heck of a play by Burke to extend the play and deliver a strike to the guy playing some of the best football of his career, number 88. Well, Kevin Burke, they talked about his poise. You're going to see him extend, escape the pocket under pressure, and make an accurate throw as Wilkinson works back to his quarterback. And they pick up a critical first down. That was so important to convert right there. An outstanding play by quarterback and wide receiver when they needed it big time to get something going offensively. Wilkinson with that reception has more than half his season production here in the playoffs. Logan Nemeth into the game and running back. Sophomore to McBain, Michigan, with his first touch of the evening. He had a big touchdown run in the semifinal win against North Central. And Nemeth wasn't seeing a ton of time early on this year, but they like how his style complements the more scat back type style of B.J. Mitchell. Nemeth, the downhill guy. Yeah, and they both have a little bit of that. Mitchell's more scatty, you're right. Nemeth, more physical as they try to get something going between the tackles a little bit, a counter play right there. They know they've got to be able to run the ball to help their offensive line protect their quarterback in the passing game. On second and eight, four-man rush leaks through. Flag is down in the area of holding. And Whitewater, like they've done in the last three stack bowl matchups against Mount Union, able to apply pressure with four. That's a four-man rush. That's those guys pinning their ears back attacking the quarterback and that is a, a privilege as a defensive coordinator holding offense number 54 the penalties decline third down marshall rutherford first team all conference gets credit for the sack watch right there watch the move he makes a high rip he's going to get the offensive lineman's edge a swim and a rip and watch him just drive through that's what's going to draw the holding call and the pressure and the sack. So now Mount Union behind the chains at third and 12. A Whitewater defensive line can pin its ears back. They bring four and get to him again, but got rid of it. A strike for a first down. At the last moment, got rid of that ball to Jack Nichols for 14 yards. Watch Michael Bratchett come off the edge right here. Dip and rip. He's going to get there, make, make the hit. But Kevin Burke, he can feel that coming. He releases that ball in the nick of time, and Nichols is there. Those hits, those pressures take their toll on a quarterback through the course of a game. Nemeth gets pop, spins out of it. Logan Nemeth. With six yards on first down. Boy, Josh Williams nailed him but didn't wrap up. The sophomore able to squeak out to set up second and four. Watch Josh Williams blitz off this edge. He's coming full speed, unblocked. Goes high with the tackle. And Nemeth able to break it, pick up some yardage. Tough sledding. Great call into the run. They just couldn't complete the play. Nice running. Breaking tackles, the Division III's best linebacking core. Four seniors, four all-conference players. Here's a bubble. Jack Nichols didn't get the blocking that he needed. And got body slammed at the line of scrimmage by Andrew Keister. Ryan Winsky there as well. It's third down and four. Four. 
you see the speed at which Whitewater plays. Play recognition and then flying to the football. Yeah, that was the thing they were concerned about was right. Mount Union speed. Yeah, it was, but I'm referring to their ability to diagnose and play quickly because they they believe in what they see and they trust what they see and they attack the football. And overcoming Mount Union's right. speed advantage with that. Third and four. Only four rush. Steps out of a tackle and has a first down. Luke Meacham is inside the 20. That's a 23 yard completion on third and four. Look, they're going to run just a TE game with their defensive line. We talked about the poise Kevin Burke has. It is being tested right now as he is being battered in the pocket. Look at the balance, the competitiveness to fight his way through that and complete the football down the field. It's Brandon Sampson, freshman DN, that had a hold of him but couldn't bring him down. First sustained drive for Mount Union. Lone score came when they took over with a takeaway at the five yard line. Nemeth with a seam. And Nemeth is inside the 10. It's the first real clean hole they've had. You're going to see just the inside zone right down the pipe. Look, he sees the crease, gets north and south, and a positive run as finally Mount Union starting to put something together on the back of their quarterback, Kevin Burke. Top player in Division Three. In Division Three's Heisman is the Gallardi. He won it Wednesday night. He looks a little bit like Johnny Manziel back there, yeah. escaping and making plays. Nemeth again, good penetration this time. Josh Williams stuck his nose in there. Gets close to a first down at the eight yard line. <laughs> Offensive coordinator Jeff Dart. First year as the play caller. Of course, Larry Karras is more of an offensive minded guy, where Vince Karras is a defensive minded guy. He also has big shoes to feel yeah. in terms of the play caller that he's replacing. Third down and short. They work out of the gun. Why not, Nemeth? Cole Cox is there. Nemeth fighting to make it close. For the conference player of the year and a Gallardi finalist wrapped him up in the backfield. You saw Coach Karras say it, fourth down. Well, once again, it's Cole Klotz diagnosing the play, great instincts. And that's the problem some spread teams have. They can't constrict things down. There's Klotz right there. Watch him attack the line of scrimmage. Takes his gap and makes that play through the back door. So here's Edward Runke on the attempt to field goal. His third school in as many years. Chuko Ball is a freshman. FCS Sacramento State is a sophomore. The whistle blew before that snap. Mount Union, their first timeout. So Mount Union got a timeout in. First one of the half for Vince Karras. You get the feeling they really want to go for it. Yeah. You know, this, this is the nation's number one scoring offense. They're used to finding the end zone. Field goals are not how you do that. Best time of the year, Dave. Capital One Bowie kicking off Saturday with a full slate of games. Starts at two with a Gilda and New Mexico Bowl. Cougars are in their first bowl in a decade. Rams are in their first bowl since 2008. You know what's going to be a great game is the Las Vegas Bowl at 3.30. Fresno State and USC. Yeah. Derek Carr. That quarterback against that USC defense. It's Capital One Bowl week. It all begins Saturday. They pulled the field goal team back, put the offense back into the huddle. Mount Union's going to go on fourth down in a yard. Look at Cole Klotz, number 44, getting the call in. He's saying, bring it on. Kevin Burke says, we will. They still work out of the gun. And a timeout. So back to back timeouts taken here by Mount Union. There's a flag down on the far side of the field.
Prior to the timeout, substitution infraction on the kicking team. The five-yard penalty remains fourth down. I figure that'll help make up their mind. Now, it was funny talking to Vince, talking about shifting to head coach, taking over for his father, Larry, who's all-time winning his coach in terms of winning percentage in college football. He said he's been there in all the right ways. Not too involved, but there are some times in situations like this, he wishes his dad could get in his ear and say, go for it or That's kick right. it. And let him make those decisions. <laughs> He's done a pretty darn good job of it, <laughs> going undefeated in your first year as head coach. So for the third time, we get ready for this fourth down play. Runky from 30. And he hooked it. Well, he had made the first one, but they called a timeout before the snap. And then Runke misses wide left. Special teams have been a spot where Mount Union has suffered against Whitewater in the three losses in the stack bowl, 9, 10, and 11. This one just wide from Runke. The nation's top defense holds the nation's top offense off the board again. in Salem, Virginia with a stack ball at the Division Three National Championship. Whitewater, 14-7 lead, trying to win its fourth title in five years, trying to beat Mount Union for the fourth consecutive time in the stack ball. And off to a good start in this game, really, with the exception of one play. Spencer Shire, the freshman center, snapped it over Matt Barron's head. They're inside their own 10. That led to Mount Union's only score. Four receivers into the near side of the field. They've got them outnumbered. Will fake the bubble. And Barron zips it down the seam for Steve Morris. First down to the 41 on a gain of 21. You'll see the pump fake out to the bubble, and the seam will open up. And an accurate throw to Steven Morris. Was one of the big concerns for Mount Union, the multiplicity of this offense. Barron trying to set up the screen. We'll dump it off to Justin Howard, who gets ripped out of bounds by Josh Scott, his sixth tackle to lead all players. Seeing a little bit of tempo now from Mount, or from Whitewater. Picking up the pace of things, too. Their quarterback is in a groove right now, seeing the field clearly and making great decisions with the football. Barron, 9 of 12. Feels the pressure. Boy, it doesn't look like he's got turf toe. Look at the cut from Barrett. Runs into his own man and gets inside the 40. 22 yards, his longest run of the season by nine yards. And you'll see him, his quick decision after nothing uncovered to head north and south. Making great decisions with the football, and that time was not to throw it, but to run it. Confidence peaking at the right time for the junior out of Westchester, Illinois. Took over midway through last season. First full year as a starter. He's got Whitewater at 14-0. Back to the air on first down. Barron steps up again. He's close to another first down with Matt Fetchko tracking him down. They'll spot him just short. Second down in the yard. I don't think this is something Mount Union thought would be a threat. Well, he hasn't really been much no. of a threat running the football, but excellent decisions. If it's not clear down the field, he saw the lane and they took it. That will frustrate a defensive line and the coverage. 42 yards on three carries, none of them designed. It's all been him improvising. Second down and short, and get the big back Ratliff behind him in the pistol. Got him outnumbered in the box, but will throw to the short side of Huber with a first down. Trey Jones pushed Tyler Huber out. After 10 to move the chain to the 21. And that's just smart football. He sees the soft coverage. He's just going to hit the quick out outside. That's free yardage as long as you have an accurate throw. And he's got the arm to put it there. Red 
Reckless. Stop made by Nigel Thomas and Josh Butler. Well, Matt Barron, it's not just been tonight, it's really been throughout the playoffs that he started to come into his own. His confidence has grown. His yeah. knowledge of the offense. Has. Remember, he only played three games last year. He's embraced his role as a leader on this football team. The team believes in him, and he believes in himself. And that's powerful when that happens. Second down and nine. Play action. He boots, has Kumaro open, finds him late, incomplete. He was wide open as soon as he turned. But the defense gets back Hank Spencer with a great play in coverage. They will move Kumaro around all over. This time they bring him in motion. He's open on the ground, on the crosser, across the field. But Barrett just couldn't get him the ball in time. Look, he's open there. But because of the pressure, he's late in setting his feet. And a nice job of Kumaro becoming a defender on the play. Great job by Hank Spencer. Good feel by the middle linebackers. Sophomore, but a team captain back in coverage. Third down and nine for Whitewater. Empty set. On Union brings four. It's picked up. Barrett on the move. Has a first down. Justin Howard sets up first down in goal. Matt Barrett continues to show great feel in the pocket. And they're motioning Kumaro out of the backfield trying to create the mismatch. It wasn't there. And you saw Barrett just make a great decision with the football. Barrett tucks it. We'll get what he can. Couple of yards to the six. Nigel Thomas with the tackle. Second down and goal. And Nigel Thomas put a little, a little smack on him right there. He had to straighten his helmet out a little bit. Nothing he didn't feel last time. <laughs> he got lit yeah, up a did. couple of times. Mary Harden Baylor. No question about his toughness. Nigel Thomas has been a starter much of the season. You saw 30 and white, but mainly second in the 2D on the stretch here. Second and goal. Throw on the fade. Second touchdown for Tyler Huber. Against Isaiah Chambers for the score. Third touchdown pass of the game for Matt Barrett, 39th this season to just one interception. Extra point from Eric Kimler, right down the middle. Wisconsin Whitewater's offense. Nobody was talking about this week. It was all about the defense against Mount Union's offense. But boy, Barrett running the show. The Warhawks cruising down the field on offense with a two score lead and the stack ball. The NCAA Division III Football Championship is brought to you by the all new 2014 Jeep Cherokee, built free. And T. Rowe Price, understanding the connections of a complex global economy. Invest with confidence. This is the Stag Bowl. This is Amos Alonzo Stag, legendary coach, coached for parts of 60 years. He's credited with contributing to the invention of a lot of things we know now in football, the linebacker position, to the man in motion, to the tackling dummy. It's a bright bulb right there. Yeah. Tyler Huber, two touchdowns for number two. Had a touchdown two years ago in this game. Whitewater beat Mount Union for the third consecutive year. Then missed just about all of last season with a broken ankle. It's Whitewater offense, man, it's a different team than we saw last week. How rewarding is that for him to be here and have that production? 
Jordan Hargrove brings it out from Mount Union. Purple Raiders will try and get something going on offense. With the ball to the 23. We come back to Sim. At halftime, the FCS playoffs continue. Two time defending champ North Dakota State in some trouble. We will have some highlights for you. Give you the story behind the Gallardi Trophy, of course, named after John Gallardi, and why PJ Harrison is done in Chapel Hill. We'll see you that. Back to Joe and David. All right, Matt, looking forward to it. A lot of folks tuning out for this one. Mid-50s with a temperature unseasonably warm here in Salem, Virginia. Mount Union goes back to work down two scores against edge pressure. Burke has one-on-one -on -one and has Morris or has Gaynor at the sticks against Marcus McLinn. Gainer went all the way past the bench. He's missed some time recently with injury. Okay, on the left, and getting pushed out of bounds. All the way to the sidewall there. Looming out with a stop on this first down play after a gain of two. B.J. Mitchell. Devin Burke has never lost a game as Mount Union starting quarterback. And has won 44 straight as a starter, dating back to the beginning of his senior year in high school. He won a state championship in St. Edward. On second down off play action. Over the middle. On the money for Nichols. And Jack Nichols with a first down inside the 35. That's a 25-yard completion to a first-team all-conference performer. And you'll see Jack Nichols right here. He's going to break it over the middle. The play action is going to pull the linebackers up. Kevin Burke sees the window. He's going to throw the ball right through it to his receiver in stride. Nichols, a former quarterback himself. Great feel for the game. Felt his way through that zone for first down. Burke off of the zone read. Wanted to pick up a block from Luke Meacham, but couldn't get it. Ryan Cortez got him for a loss, second down. So Kevin Burke had a chance to cut it up the field. Thought he can outrun Cortez. Cortez was there to make that play. Cortez, part of that linebacking core for Whitewater, four seniors, all four of them are two-time all-conference players, and they're in a 4-3. <laughs> that's right, so they rotate through. Yeah. That tells you, that's the strength of their defense, is those linebackers. Second down 11, Burke steps up, checks it down to B.J. Mitchell. He gets 10 yards and sets up a third down in short. Kyle Wismer made the tackle. They've got to get B.J. Mitchell going in this offense. He's a difference maker. He's shifty. He's got big playability in space. They've got to try and free him up somehow. And throwing him the football is one way of doing that. They've only run him twice right. for a total of three yards. Here he is on third down, and there's... Wismer again. Got maybe a half yard. Fourth down and short coming up for Mount Union. I love the way these linebackers attack the line of scrimmage. Kyle Wismer, you'll see him attack the line of scrimmage right here. No doubt about what he sees, who has the running back, and he makes a sure tackle. Fourth and two. Soft coverage across the board, and they need just two yards. A double move drops it into a tight window. Brian Gaynor holds on for a first down. On fourth and two, how about the confidence of the top player in Division Three? That's why he is a top player. Look at that double move. Look, they knew they were going to try to jump it. They were going to play the sticks. They gave the impression of soft coverage. The double move got him. 
Feeds in Mitchell. He's inside the five. Mitchell fighting to the goal line. Reaching in. Touchdown, Mount Union. Ryan Winsky had a shot to bring him down inside the five, but the freshman on a St. Clair Shores, Michigan, pulled out of the tackle and pulled Mount Union within a score here in the final minute of the half. Boy, what a big score that is going into the break. Lunky on for the extra point. And it's a 21-14 game. So they had it fourth down and two. They're able to convert. This is the look of a championship football team. A double move and a critical down. A tight throw and a tight window. And then your running back. We talked about getting him back in the game. Watch this determination. Great job by the offensive line. And undeniable in his effort to get to the end zone. And he is not a big guy. He's 165 pounds if that. You can't measure that. That's all heart right there. So B.J. Mitchell into the end zone. On an eight play 72 yard drive. Looking for his eighth consecutive 100 yard game. The guy that began the season of the JV team. Moved into the starting role late in the regular season. So inside of a half minute in this first half. Runky will send it away. Here's Marcus McLinn. There's a flag down. A flag down back inside the 20 as McLinn takes it across the 40. 32-yard return coming back. So an illegal block in the back on Whitewater will back him up inside Turn. the 15. Illegal block in the back, number 39 in the return team. 10 yard turn for the spot of foul, first down. And they were likely in a spot where they were going to run the clock anyways. You'll see number 39 right here. There's the push in the back. And I'm not even sure if that block was necessary. First down and ten for Wisconsin Whitewater. Ball the nine yard line. So they'll take a knee here and run that clock down. And Whitewater's got to feel pretty good about where it stands right now. After missing the playoffs last year, Lance Leipold's team trying to beat Mount Union in the Stag Bowl for the fourth time in five years. They get their fourth Division Three national title. Now we go to the studio with Matt Schick, the NCAA championship studio for the halftime report. Thank you, Joe. Very entertaining first half. Wisconsin Whitewater with a seven-point edge on Mountain Union for the Division Three championship game. And we welcome you into halftime. I am Matt Schick. While Mountain Union holds the longest active win streak in all of college football with 29 straight games on the FCS side, it is North Dakota State putting a 22-game win streak on the line. The FCS semifinals. There's Craig Bull after... This game and perhaps the next game if they get to the national championship for the FCS he'll be off to Wyoming and here it's well, off to the race of Steven Tames the pick six of Brock Jensen North Dakota State they've never lost a playoff game at Fargo Dome they're down seven nothing in the semifinals to New Hampshire winner of that game will take on the winner of this one coming up tomorrow what to watch for it's Towson and Eastern Washington your rods and cones about to get screwed up playing on that red field Towson has won 11 straight road games Eastern Washington has the second longest active win streak in the FCS at 10 in a row behind North Dakota State that's a early local time 11 a.m. local time out west.
Mount Union, Wisconsin Whitewater. There we are, seven point margin for the Division Three title. Welcome back to the 2013 NCAA Division III Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. It's the Stag Bowl, Salem, Virginia, and it's on to the second half of the eighth meeting in the last nine years between Mount Union and Wisconsin Whitewater. Warhawks trying to win their fourth title in the last five seasons after missing the playoffs last year. Mount Union in its ninth straight trip, 17th in the last 20 years, trying to make it back-to-back -back titles and a record 12 in program history with David Diaz Infante, Paul Carcantera, Joe Davis, back in Salem for what promises to be a great second half. Here's Jordan Hargrove, the freshman, bringing it out. Sam in and drop with special teams, Dylan Moraine, it's credit for the tackle. Mount Union's offense goes back to work here in the second half. This is the nation's number one offense. On pace for more than 200 yards less than their season average, working against the best defense in the country. Yeah, I tell you what, that defense has been outstanding. But I tell you what, Mount Union found something offensively at the end of that first half. Let's see if they can continue here in this first possession of the second half. Led by the top player in Division Three, Kevin Burke. Work off play action on first down and take a shot. Double move. Flag is down. It's pulled in by Gainer near midfield. 28 yards, but again, a flag down. A better throw, and it's a touchdown. This is going to go on Whitewater. All that said, though, Kevin Burke would like to have that throw back. Yeah. Underthrew that just a little bit. Holding, defense, number three, that penalty's declined. Result of the play is a first down. I love the play call right out of the gates. Play action, take a shot. On the 48, first run play of the half, B.J. Mitchell gets shut down by the nation's top defense, Marshall Rutherford, the ball came out. Who's got it? Scrambling for the ball at the bottom of the pile. Has Whitewater done it again? Their 41st takeaway of the season. Marcia Rutherford ripped it out and recovered it. I'm not sure how 95 wound up with it. You'll see Rutherford right there just rip the ball loose. Interesting. The whistle was not blown for progress and stopped, but he was not down. So Whitewater with a plus 31 turnover margin of the season. Takes over with the ball in shot territory here at the 46. And instead of the ground, Jordan Ratliff makes a cut for a first down inside the 35 as we check in with Paul Carcatera. Well, Joe, moments ago, I caught up with Whitewater's Lance Leipold. He told me that he's really happy with the passing game. Matt Barris, he said, was very effective dissecting this defense. And they've moved Jake Kumaro around for the first time all season. He thinks he has the Mount Union defense on their heels because they haven't seen any of that because they haven't done it this season. But defensively, he said they have to watch the zone read offense and they have to tackle better. All right, Paul. Great stop. First down and 10 here at the 33. Start with Kumaro on the backfield. Motion him out looking for a mismatch. Barrett rolls underneath. Gibbons got popped by Alex Kocheff. Leading tackler from Mount Union with a tackle after six, second and four. And once again, Matt Barrett, good decision with the ball, extends the play, completes the pass. Not forcing anything. We'll just take the ball that, that comes out now. Barrett is 13 to 17. 
than 160 yards. Second down and five. Against the loaded box. Offensive line still able to get a surge and a first down. Hank Spencer makes the tackle. Well, turnover margin has been a big part of the reason Wisconsin Whitewater, one year after missing out of the playoffs, and in a year where they have 47 freshmen, have been able to get back here to the Stag Bowl. Staggering numbers. 41 takeaways. That is incredible. An example of it. Swarming, tackling, breaking at the football. Officials time out here. We're going to measure it. Didn't get a very good spot. You know, talking to coaches too, saying, you know, what, what's the secret to that? Those numbers are staggering. He says, yeah, we work on it like everybody else, but I think it's because they keep it simple, which allows their defense to play fast, which puts a lot of hats at the football. They're marking it just short, so third and inches. Well, New Hampshire and North Dakota State going on right now over on ESPN2 in the FCS semifinal. North Dakota State trying to three-peat. Trying to get into that title game against the winner of Towson in Eastern Washington, which will be tomorrow at 2 o'clock on ESPNU on the red turf out in Cheney, Washington. Uh-oh. Towson's not lost down the road this year, though. Not played on a red field either. That's right. Can't discount that. Third and inches for Whitewater. Three of five on third down tonight. They hustle up to the line. Often this means a sneak. Instead, it's a lead play, and it's a first down inside the 20 for Jordan Rantliff. Mike Meyer up from his safety spot to make the tackle on a gain of six. See, this is just old-fashioned power football right here. They're going to pull the guard, block down, kick out the edge, and north and south running. They're comfortable in those short-distance yardage situations. It's what they do. A little more aggressive and wide open this year than in years past. And still with this program's built on hard-nosed, blue-collar football. Wisconsin, right? That's right. That's pressure coming. You run away from it. Ratliff with a seam. Ratliff is in. Touchdown, Whitewater. 18 yards. And that offensive line, which was the question mark coming into this game, exploded the hole open for Ratliff. takes advantage of the 41st takeaway of the season. Extra point coming from Eric Kindler. Back to a two-score lead for the Warhawks. They take advantage of the takeaway. Great teams make people pay for their mistakes. Another takeaway from the defensive side of the ball, and they know exactly what to do with it. Whitewater up, 28-14. Jordan Ratliff entered the season fifth on the depth chart at running back, and now he's got a stag bowl score that has Wisconsin Whitewater up by two scores. We welcome you back inside our broadcast booth. David Diaz-Infante, two-time Super Bowl champion. Joe Davis, I think we're both a little bit surprised at how well Whitewater's been on offense. Well, I think the big surprise is, and we really shouldn't when you look at his numbers, is to play a Matt Barron. Outstanding yeah. at the quarterback position. A very balanced attack and an opportunistic defense, I think, has really been the difference. Yeah, it's a top defense in the country. We knew that they'd be there, and they got their 41st takeaway of the season. But like you said, going to break, it's one thing getting takeaways. It's another thing taking advantage of them. Yeah, that's right. Great teams make teams pay for their mistakes. Barron outplaying the Gallardi Trophy winner, Kevin Burke, through two plus quarters in the stat bowl. Here's Jordan Hargrove. Hargrove with a solid return, spinning his way across the 25. As we look back at that touchdown run for Jordan Ratliff. Watch the work of this offensive line. You're going to see a stretch block here. Slant by the defensive lineman and then the guard getting up to the second level. 
no one's going to touch Ratliff as he attacks the line of scrimmage. Look at that. A hat on a hat, a cup lock on the backside, and he's into the end zone. What a run. What a play. One thing with Mount Union. This is a program 270 some wins the last 20 years 11 losses in that span something to be said for knowing how to win it's Burke getting six Let's check in with Paul again at the half Joe I caught up with coach Vince Karras from Mount Union he told me he needs better play out of his offensive line in the run game and protecting the All-American Kevin Burke defensively he said they're really having trouble with Jay Kumaro his size his strength and the way they're moving around he doesn't know if they had the matchup for him in the first half more attention to Kumaro and they had an issue with a 6-5 receiver Peter Sorensen last week off play action they check it down here Luke Meacham has a first down. Nation best 29 game winning streak for Mount Union. But it's not been easy at any point during this playoff run. They returned just five starters from last season's title team. Kevin Burke, the only one on offense. So Meacham and the rest of the bunch, first year starters. Well, that's what's incredible about the number one offense in the nation. It's Kevin Burke, their quarterback, is the only returning starter. And he has led this group through this whole process. From the 41, a low snap picked up. Nice grab by Luke Meacham. First down inside the 40. Heck of a job by Burke on a quick throw with the ball snapped near his feet. Watch what the run fake does to the linebackers. They're going to attack the line of scrimmage, going to open up the window back there for the throw. Back to back catches for Meacham. Now they pump the bubble and throw it back to Meacham. Three straight grabs for the junior. And a first down inside the 20. There's so many things you can do off the bubble. They're going to stock block. Look at the shoulder turn on the pump fake and the touch throw outside the Meacham. The All-Americans trying to bring his team back. The 18, Burke off play action, looking back to the near side and floating into coverage. It's picked off and then dropped. Brady Grable had his ninth interception of the season, slipped through his fingertips and it's second down. Boy, a very uncharacteristic throw from Burke here. That's right, under pressure, he throws the ball up, but what a job by Logan to strip the ball and become a defender. Wow. They give it to Nemeth here on second down. He gets four, third and six now. Second time Mount Union has moved into this area of the field and then started to slow down. Looking at a third and six here. Drops him. A gain of just one, and it's fourth down. Watch number 97, Lou Manette. Played and read the exchange. Comes back and makes the tackle. Outstanding discipline on the zone read. And no hesitation. Mount Union to go on fourth down. Off play action. Burke is pressured and dropped. Michael breaks out for the sack. And Whitewater takes over. And Vince Karras' team in trouble early in this second half. Watch Michael Brachette come off the edge, you up and under, get the sack on fourth down. This Whitewater defense, number one in the country, shutting down the nation's top offense. The NCAA Division III Football Championship is brought to you by the Discover It Card. It's a game changer. 
and the Cree LED bulb, the biggest thing since the light bulb. Stack Bowl was first played in 1973. Bounced around from Phoenix City, Alabama to Kings Island, Ohio, to Phoenix City again, then Bradenton, Florida, before coming to Salem in 1993 when Mount Union won its first title. First of 11 titles. But they've not been able to beat Wisconsin Whitewater in the last three meetings between these teams. First down and 10 after the turnover on downs. Ratliff, no gain. As we look back at that fourth down and five play. So we call a covered sack. Look, two high safeties. They are daring Mount Union to run the football and watch the pressure get there because they're able to play coverage. Michael Brachette gets the sack on fourth down. It's the second time the Mount Union has taken the ball to the 13-yard line and then not scored. They missed a field goal. Now they've turned it over on downs. Those two drives counting for 118 yards, but no points. Barrett well protected. Coverage good. Barrett downfield and pulled in. Tyler Huber having a heck of a night. He's got two touchdowns and now 26 yards with a first down to the 45. The six-year senior coming to play here tonight. What a job by Matt Barron extending the play. Watch him come back to his quarterback, slide and secure the football. Four catches, 65 yards, and two scores for number two. Didn't play last season because of a broken ankle. The leading receiver at the last time Whitewater won a national title. From the 45. Ratliff into a crowded box. Janela and Rosalva combined in the stop, second and nine. right here they're stacking the eye with them now moving him in different positions trying to create a matchup they've got a corner on him does mount union like they want here's a draw play is gonna get pulled down from behind Cody Pogorelic with a stop of well, the division two championship taking place tomorrow at noon Northwest Missouri State knocked off powerhouse Grand Valley to get into the championship take on the no Rhine, Florence Alabama NCAA Division two championship tomorrow on ESPN 2 big third down right here for the Mount Union defense First down, running the comeback against Isaiah Chambers for 10 yards. We'll see Jay Fillmore again. He's going to get the defensive back to get out of his back pedal and run. And he's going to come back to his quarterback. The accurate throw on the run. Boy, Mount Union, you know they can score points. That defense is going to need to come up with a stop. You're going to be in dangerous territory midway through this third quarter. Kumaro once again. The Illinois transfer with six on first down. Really impressed with the velocity that Matt Barron puts on the football. That ball comes out of his hand. It's hot. Working quickly now. Here's Gibbons. Patient running for two. Matt Barrett has 39 touchdowns in just one interception this season. Part of the reason why is the flag comes in the back judge. Part of the reason why is he has that strong arm. Where do interceptions usually happen? Between the hashes. Right. He doesn't have to go there because he's got strong enough an arm to throw outside. He can throw from the far hash. He can drive the football. Look, he is fired up right now. I saw him in pregame and look at him right now. He is. He is on fire. He is playing with a great deal of confidence. He is leading this team. After the play, 
Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That is huge. Goes on Josh Scott. Somebody from Mount Union's got to make a play on defense. That's right. They can't go down by three scores. Whitewater hustles up to the line. It's a double, or it's a pass into the end zone for Kumaro, incomplete. They tossed it to Steve Morris, who was a high school quarterback. It's a pretty good looking ball. That's not just a regular running back. You can tell with a spin on that thing. Second and ten. What a call by Whitewater. That is going for the jugular right there. They're looking for the knockout punch. They're not playing this thing close to the vest. They're here to win. Andy Kodanecki, first season as a coordinator under Vince Leipold. He's got a lot of new faces on that staff. Four new coaches this year from last season. Two of the returning coaches moved positions. Second and ten against the Blitz. Picked up. Third down. Trying to give Huber his third touchdown of the day. Trey Jones step for step. First incompletion of the drive from Matt Barron. Completed eight straight. Whitewater's converted both third down and longs. Remarkable they've only had two third down and longs all day. This is a good production on first down. The balanced attack, running and throwing the football. Again, Kumaro starts in the backfield. They now get him matched up on the strong safety coach F. Barrett well protected. Scrambling. Scramble drill in the end zone. Kumaro came loose. How about Kochev sticking with him for that long? Fourth down. For an eternity in the back of the end zone. Watch how long this play goes. There's Kumaro. There's Kochev sticking with him. Look. Never takes his eyes off him. He's trailing him, tracking him. The duration of that play. Now Whitewater looking for a three-score lead. Eric Kindler has made all three field goals in his Stag Bowl career from 35 yards. Everything going right for Whitewater so far tonight. The senior from Germantown, Wisconsin, four for four in the national championship in his career. Two as well, part of three straight for Wisconsin Whitewater. Didn't make the playoffs last year. Back in it this year, trying to beat Mountain Union for the fourth time in five years. I called that game. Yeah. In the snow. A little different weather. Yeah, a little different weather. The kickoff was moved back. And they persevered. Let's go. Let's go. Mountain Union is in this game for the Ninth consecutive year, 17th time in the last 20 seasons. They've won 11 titles. One of the more dominant programs in college sports. Yeah, they're not used to losing, right? Right. And, and the looks on their faces display just that. Not used to losing, but when they do lose, it's against Whitewater. Right. And it's in national championship games. 114 and four since the start of 2006. All four of those losses have come to Wisconsin Whitewater right here in the stack bowl. All right, so Mount Union back to work. The issue has not been getting the ball down the field. It's been finishing drives off. Why? In the red zone. Uh, because they're, you know, they really are a true spread team. And they're not comfortable in terms of banging it down when spaces get tighter. And that's also because Whitewater's been able to play the run with six guys. Seven guys in the box at the most, two high safeties. They're playing coverage because of their front four, because of their linebackers, allowing them to stop the run. Really just five in the box here. Yeah. Three defenders over two receivers on each side of the field. 
Burt firing down the sideline. Sermon Wilkinson is close to midfield. More than half of his production this season is coming to playoffs. He goes for 33 on his second catch of the night. Look, the corner's going to jump the route. He's going to make the whole shot right there over the corner before the safety could get there. Senior out of Dayton, Ohio, over the ball to the 49. Running with a purpose for two. Zach France combining the stop with Marshall Rutherford, second and eight. And Whitewater's doing this to the top offense in the country, averaging 49 points a game. And they came to this game with 96 explosive plays. That is incredible. Those are plays that are 20 plus yards. Almost caught that ball up, lost a yard. Marcus McLinn coming in a corner blitz, sets up third and nine. Into the boundary, you'll see McLinn coming off the boundary corner on the sack. They're not ready for it. Great call by Whitewater. They don't blitz much. When they do, it's very effective. Steps into his throw on time and on target. Bow comes loose. Did Whitewater recover inbounds? You bet they did. Third takeaway for Whitewater. It was Jack Nichols who had it for a first down, but then coughed it up. Dylan Morang falls on top of it. You'll see the catch. Now you'll see the the jerseys coming and the hats coming. And there it is. When you're always hustling, you happen to be at the right place at the right time. It doesn't happen on accident. It's guys playing hard and hustling to the football. Ratliff across the 40. Union has now lost 19 fumbles this season. Coming into the game, their 17 fumbles was more than all but six teams in Division Three. And I want to correct, I said three takeaways. That's the second of the night. Yeah, Wisconsin went down. Play action. Barrett wants Huber. Incomplete. A flag comes in. Chambers can't believe it. But I think this is going to go on Whitewater. They're going to get Huber for pushing off. No, it will be on Mount Union. Mount Union can't buy a break right now. Pass interference. Defense number 23. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. See if he gets there before the ball. Uh, he gets a hook and some restriction of the receiver, but boy, that is tough. That timing is really close to make that call. I can see why Chambers upset. You see one penalty for Whitewater. That's the only penalty in the last two games on the Warhawks. From the 42 with a first down and 10. A three score lead. More play action. In the flats, it's Howard. Dax Van Antwerp pushed him out of bounds.
play action again. Flag is down as Barrett takes off. Runs for a first down. Flag down in the backfield. And it's holding on Whitewater. Now the NCAA Elite 89 Award. Recognizes the true essence of the student athlete by honoring the individual who's reached the pinnacle of competition. Okay. Number 89. The national Can championship the level in their spot. sport while also Replay achieving the highest down. academic standard among their peers. Lead 89 presented to the student athlete with the highest cumulative GPA. Participated in the finals for each of the NCAA's 89 championships. And uh, 4.0 for Hank Spencer, sophomore captain. A sophomore. And voted as a captain yeah. that's how Sam that's that's what kind of leadership this young man displays on the field and off the field his defense trying to come up with a stop it's been all white water in the second half that one is almost picked off by Jones he was sparring with Jay Kumaro did a nice job of jamming him Kumaro couldn't even get off the line of scrimmage and it's third and 15 Jones decided to challenge him had the inside position and would not give it up. Matt Barron got away with one there. And if you're Mount Union, a stop has to happen here when you got him third and 15. Yep. We've got Kumaro one on one to the top of the screen. Barrett going for Huber. A flag comes in, pass interference, drive extended. Trey Jones never able to turn to find the ball, which isn't an issue unless you make contact. They have a lot of confidence in their corners. On third and 15, they bring pressure, play man to man. Pass interference, defense, number five, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Instead of playing some sort of zone coverage, they bring pressure, man-to-man. -man. Matt Barron's going to throw it up, and they're going to get a call. Such a call on the outside tonight. They already have the size disadvantage out there. They're having to deal with calls that are in favor of the offense, and it's gone both ways, particularly on this side. That puts them in a tough spot. Play action, and up there, and we'll run into the arms of Jonathan Gunnell and gets stuck. Durham alarms there as well, second down. I see Jonathan Gunnell come in from his linebacker spot. There he is. Helmets coming in hard. Matt Barron. I think Matt Barron's got to tighten that helmet. We've seen the last two weeks that thing pop loose too many times. Check it and tell. Barron over the middle and it's broken up. Heck of a play by Jonathan Gunnell. What a pick six in the semifinal last week against North Central. They're down again. You'll see him right there. He's going to play the scene. He recognizes the route and reads the eyes of the quarterback. That ball's coming with a little bit of heat on it. Nice job. He is a guy who's played so well for Mount Union. Had to fill in for Hank Spencer early in the year. How about that? Matt Barron, 457 times. He's put it in the air. He's been picked off once. Empty set on third and 10. Barron has room to run. Knows where the sticks are and gets a first down. Boy, is this kid feeling it tonight. And this is something you typically don't do against a mobile quarterback. We're playing two man. Everyone turns their back to the quarterback except for the safeties, and they're too late to come up and make the play. 56 rushing yards for Barrett. Well, only coming into the game, they that's thought they were facing a mobile quarterback. Yeah, that's right. 
but his scrambling, that's an adjustment you have to make. If he's hurting you on those down and distance, second and long, third and long. From the 19, here's Ratliff. Long running to the 15. You figure Whitewater will let this third quarter clock wind down. We entered the second half with a score 21 14 Mount Union and Vince Karras' team, the number one offense in the country, starting the half with a ball with a chance to go down and tie the game, but they turned it over. They turned it over again, they stalled inside the 15, and now trail by 17 as we go to the fourth quarter of the Stag Bowl. Whitewater trying to get its fourth title in five years. We go to the studio with Matt Schick. All right, thanks, Joe. So Mountain Union and their win streak in jeopardy. North Dakota State, the FCS level, and not so much. And New Hampshire backed up in their own end, and there's Levon Perry. The scoop and the score. The two-time defending champs of 24-7 at Fargo Dome. Fourth quarter coming up. Back in the 2013 NCAA Division III Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual, Lance Leipold in his 100th game as head coach at Whitewater and his sixth stag bowl is one quarter away from another championship. A year after they went 7-3, missed out on the playoffs. Four new coaches this year. Two of the returning coaches moved to different positions. He's got his team back here and on the verge of another title. Trying to add to the lead as we start the fourth. Mount Union bringing pressure from the secondary. Tom Lally, whose name we're saying for the first time here, second leading tackler for this Mount Union team, makes the stop. Dave Spencer sets up a third down, a down in which Mount Union's not been able to get a stop. Yeah, Vince Karras really thinks that he's going to be the next great one. The next Matt Fetchko. Just a sophomore. Whitewater's converted third down repeatedly on this drive. They run it with Gibbons. And they convert it again on third and six. They run for seven. Tackle made by 31. They motion the trips. They've got the box they want. And just some great running by Ryan Givens, number six. When you can run it on third and six and convert, things are going well for your offense. It's also the confidence they have in what they're doing because they've been so balanced. They're not predictable. Even with a touchdown here, it'd still be a three possession game. They don't want to settle for a field goal. Ratliff makes one man miss. Mount Union swarms. Field goal would make it a three touchdown game. A touchdown with an extra point would make it a three touchdown. And Two point conversion. On second and goal. Rantliff downhill. Third and goal. Jordan Ratliff on the carry. Block from tackle Lucas Skiba, right guard. Spencer. Nick Spencer makes the tackle. We got two tight ends over that left side. They pull a guard there. Good power football. Converted both third downs on this drive and then converted one with a penalty as well. Third and goal from inside the five. Barrett to throw. Pumps one way. Goes the other. Kumaro makes the catch. Where do they mark him though? He's in. 
Touchdown, Whitewater. There is replay here in the D3 final. Drag those feet in the end zone. Watch the tight window that Matt Barrett throws this ball into. It is on a rope to the corner of the end zone. To Jake Kumaro. Dragging the feet. Secures the ball, makes a catch. Kumarov with his second touchdown of the game. Whitewater is rolling a team that's won 29 games in a row. Nation's top defense dominating nation's top offense here in the Stag Bowl. I'll tell you what, they've done it with the dominant defensive line, linebacker play. They have played fast, created turnovers. On Union Faithful can't believe it. Yeah, they're in shock. I think we are a little bit too. Yeah, I, I did not, I did not expect this, this kind of dominance. <laughs> Program that's in this game for the ninth year in a row, 17th time in the last 20 years. In the last two decades, Mount Union has lost 11 games. And if this holds up, they'll have lost 12, five of them to Wisconsin Whitewater with a stack hole in 20 years. Jordan Hargrove brought down shy of the 20. Still is the nation's top offense, though. No doubt can score in a hurry. The issue you're facing here is anytime you're making a comeback from down like this, it usually involves getting a takeaway. And Whitewater doesn't turn it over. Yeah, and it's been Mount Union coughing the football up. I mean, no more, one more crucial than the one to begin the second half. Well, they had a chance to, to tie the game up. Kevin Burke, top player in Division Three, Works play action and has time. Floating one. Gainer makes the play. Beautiful throw laid across the middle. Brian Gainer, who's been banged up all playoffs long, having a great game for the Raiders. Watch Gainer right here in the throw by Kevin Burke. Gainer's just going to keep working over the middle of the field, and he comes open between the zones. Shoulder for Wilkinson incomplete. Coverage from McLean. A second with Paul Carcatera. Well, Whitewater's defense just had a spirited focus huddle. Defensive line coach Kevin Bullis was intense and said, you're playing the number one offense in the nation. They have a lot of bullets. Don't give up. If we stay after them, they will unravel. Keep the pressure on. Soft coverage this time. They take advantage with Mike Caliccio, who had the game-winning touchdown catch last week it was the fourth catch of his career the first touchdown of his career sophomore to Webster New York third down less than a yard Burke making a change soft coverage to the near side slot and Luke Meacham where he's looking but he's going long in trouble and picked off Dylan Morang who recovered a fumble earlier has the interception Burke had one on one at the middle of the field open but sailed it long and that's the third takeaway of the day for Whitewater Kevin Burke, who won the Gavardi Trophy, is the nation's top division three player on Wednesday. A lot more fun Wednesday night. The NCAA Division Three Football Championship. 
is presented by Northwestern Mutual, proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA, and in part by Bod Man, powerful, sexy fragrances for men. Matt Barron, the Wisconsin Whitewaters, still in the show tonight in the Stag Bowl. Eighth meeting between these two teams in the last nine seasons in Whitewater, 11 minutes, eight seconds away from beating Mount Union for the fourth time, five years. After the third takeaway of the day for Whitewater's defense, the offense goes to work from the third. In the drive for the Rattler front. And Rattler scores through. For 19 yards. Jordan Ratliff just going to take the, the handoff, follow his guard, and just squeezes through a hole in the line of scrimmage. The guy that entered the season fifth on the depth chart at running back has run behind this young offensive line for 117 yards in the national championship game. Well, that was a matchup the coaches were talking about. Can our offensive line handle that athletic front of Mount Union? They have certainly done that. Baron off play action, double move to Kumaro. And the 6-5 Kumaro goes up and gets it. Jake Kumaro at six foot five. Making a play down the field. Watch him. Comes sprinting out. Stutter go. Great coverage by the defensive back. The safety's coming. Just an incredible throw and incredible focus on the ball. Watch this. Max protection up front. They've got everybody in. They're going for the juggler. I love the aggressive play calling. 103 yards receiving for Kumaro now. Two touchdowns. Ratliff powers through a hole inside the five. Jordan Ratliff on the carry. This offensive line is taking control of this game. Watch the guard pull and lead the way for Ratliff. Double team at the point of attack. Look at that. The hole opens up just how you draw it up on the board. And an offensive line that was a question mark coming in with its youth has been a big part of the story for Whitewater. Dominating performance against a team right in a 29 game winning streak. Second down to the yard, can't get a first down here. Ratliff again. He wasn't even touched. Touchdown, Whitewater. So Whitewater's going to get its fourth title in the last five years, it looks like, and they're going to do it, score more points than they ever have against Mount Union. There's a flag down in this extra point. It's on Mount Union, so it's declined. How about Jordan Ratliff, sophomore out of Milwaukee? And how about this offensive line paving the way for what is likely another title? Oh. ESPN's NCAA championship coverage continues tomorrow with the women's volleyball championship. Wisconsin and Penn State all Big Ten for the title. 9.30 on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your official online home of all 89 NCAA championships. Jordan Ratliff is eating. He wants more. Mount Union hasn't lost by more than 20 points since November of 1989. That's a long time. That is mind blowing. John Carroll team that was really good this year. Played a tough final week of the regular season. Falling for 
first round of the playoffs. Back to the touchdown again. This offensive line getting the job done. Watch Mountain Union. They're going to bring pressure right here. The offensive line is going to black back on one. The guard and tackle can come here, and the guard will just trap the other blitzing linebacker that thinks he's free. And that's going to allow Jordan Ratliff again to hit, make his way to the end zone. Nice job of picking up pressure. Two sophomores, two freshmen, and a junior on that offensive line. Burke incomplete. Cortez dropping into coverage with a pass intended for Jack Nichols. Second and ten. They're going to be loving this, huh? The O line getting a little face time. Oh, yeah. Burke keeps. And Brett pulls him down. What a frustrating night it's been for Kevin Burke. More great play by that defensive line and linebackers playing assignment football on the zone read. Kevin Burke, who's a 1,000 yard rusher on the season, has negative three on the ground today. Dangerous throw picked off. Graybolt's ninth interception of the year, his sixth in the playoffs. New school record and a touchdown for Whitewater. They've broken the half century mark against Mount Union. You'll see, you'll see Brady Grable break on the football, read the eyes of Kevin Burke. Junior out of Norway, Michigan. He said these corners emergence has been a big part of the key for this Whitewater defense. Turning into lockdown guys, allowing them to do a lot of other stuff. Nine interceptions on the season. And you'll see why right here. He's going to be playing off. He's going to get in his back pedal, let it roll, and you'll see him read in the eyes of the quarterback. Seeing the setup and then now breaking on the football inside out, undercutting the route, and taking it in for the pick six. Look, he knew he had it. Look, they are loving it. Meanwhile, this proud Mount Union program getting stomped on Division III's biggest stage. Mount Union has given up more than 150 points in the last three games. Here's Hargrove. New Hampshire and North Dakota State going on right now on ESPN2 as North Dakota State looks for a three-peat, trying to take care of a team that's never been to the title game, doing it up in the Fargo Dome. It's cold outside, but inside there, one of the better atmospheres in all the college football. Wow. Yeah. Eastern Washington, Towson tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern. On the red, on the Inferno, as they call it, taking on a Towson team. 8 0 on the road this year. Working rhythm for Wilkinson. Think of a strange feeling this be, must be for Kevin Burke. The last time he lost a game was as an eighth grader, I believe. Well, he lost games before them, but the last time he lost a championship, championship game. Yeah, eighth game. grade. Said he still, he still eats it. He still remembers it. 
Loading up, taking a shot. Wilkinson had gone behind the defense, but out of his reach. So Ma Union, you know, his defense giving up more than 50 points a game over the last three. But before the last three, this is a top 25 defense nationally. Couple good offenses the last two weeks. Wesley is a top 50 offense nationally. Mount, or North Central top 10 offense. Whitewater's offense has not been that great this year. They've put up 52 points in this game. 36 points per game, the average, that's 30th. 89th in yards per game is Whitewater. Right. It's not been the story. The story's been the defense all year. Well, once again, turnovers, a huge factor. Creating them and the offense being able to capitalize on them. wanted Nichols second down so Wisconsin Whitewater is going to win its 20th consecutive postseason game and Mount Union since the start of 2006 will fall to 114 and 5 with five losses to Whitewater they gotta hate Whitewater that's a strong word <laughs> that's been a thorn in their Man. side that's one of the reasons why they shifted their offense exactly and, and so excited about Kevin Burke, what he brings to the offense in terms of mobility and be able to escape rushes and create conflict for the defense. But this defense has played lights out here tonight. Discipline at a very quick pace, attacking the line of scrimmage, and very sure of what they need to do. Generated four more takeaways tonight, 44 in the season now to lead the country. Burke underneath Nichols, Klotz. Hits him right at the line again. Will depend on the spot. Scott Wisman, beg your pardon for the ten. We just got a text from our ESPN colleague Dan Hawkins, who's a former D3 guy himself. He said, "Never thought you'd have to go to the filler material in this one." <laughs> we really didn't. I think that most people would say that if it was going to be a blowout. It was probably going to be Mount Union's potent offense doing it. Even Whitewater's concerned about the speed. Red Shack gets another sack. Of Mount Union. And it's been Whitewater that's played faster here tonight. Watch Bratchett. Bratchett come on off the corner. Using his speed and athletic ability. Kevin Burke has no chance. Second sack of the night for Brad Chet. He's getting held right now. They would have gotten a third. Logan Nemeth hogtied after seven or eight yards. Third down. Easter and Klotz combining for the tackle. Boy, what's this say about Mary Harden Baylor's defense? They're able to Hold Whitewater down to 16 points last week. And they came out on fire last week, too. More pressure, and down goes Burke. Wismer got in there, but pressure came first from Kevin Clunas. Well, this is what it does. It starts to affect any quarterback. Your feet are moving. The pressure gets to you. Four and catch from McLean taken inside the thirty. Wisconsin Whitewater. 5-0-3 from another title. Whitewater becomes the third team to score 50 points in a stag ball. The other two, Mount Union.
probably looking at the MVP of this stag ball under center there, Matt Barron. Handed off to Jordan Ratliff. Ratliff pushed down after a yard. Here's Paul Carcatier. You know, Joe, for Whitewater, it actually took not making the playoffs last year to catch his breath. After winning three straight titles from 2009 to 2011, the expectations became title or bust. Head coach Lance Leipold told me last year allowed the program to recommit to football academics and appreciate the past. Four new coaches arrived this offseason, groomed the 47 freshmen on his roster, and leadership established this offseason. In a sense, losing made them winners again and minutes away from a national title. Yeah, Paul, that's what Coach was talking about. So this team is battle-tested. What they went through last year, the new players on this team, they have focused down. Short game for Ratliff. He talked about their quiet resolve. He goes, when they've been down a halftime or something, there, there's no rah-rah going on. It's a quiet resolve this team has. A quiet confidence. Not so quiet here tonight. Oh. It's speaking loudly and clearly. They're about to hand Mount Union its worst defeat in 40 years. They got beat 48 to nothing by Wittenberg, November 26, 1974. No fashion whooping. Well, Randall is thank good. Speaking of good, bowl season's good. Starts Saturday. Capital One Bowl Week kicking off with a full slate of games. Talked about those first two. How about the last two? Buffalo's got one of the best defensive players in the country in Khalil Mack. I was going to say, you want to see a guy that can play some ball, and he will be playing on Sundays. Outstanding right there. And San Diego State, Rocky Long in that defense, that is a salty football team right there. Tulane and Louisiana Lafayette, an in-state battle down in the New Orleans Bowl. More than 50,000 expected in the Superdome. How about Tulane turning it around? We had a chance a couple of times to see Mark Hudspeth's raging Cajun team. That's a good squad. Tulane to be taken off. Keith Ratliff running his clock. Keeps those legs running for seven. And that pile was just moving. That was like a rugby scrum. And Wisconsin Whitewater was winning it. said it a couple of times already but for this guy Jordan Ratliff 27 in purple to start the season fifth on the depth chart at running back that is not even close to seeing the field and, and they wind up as a hundred yard rusher in the national championship and they were playing a bunch of guys trying to find the guy and finally he emerged and that's when this offense really started to take off 146 yards on 28 carries Knox Gibbons I'll make sure you tune in immediately after this one finishes for live coverage of the 2013 Stag Bowl Trophy Ceremony on ESPN3.com. Paul Carpenter will take it through that. Down in the field with a winning team. What a dominating performance for Wisconsin Whitewater. About to hand Mount Union its first loss. In 30 games, it's first loss since Whitewater beat them two years ago. On third and short, they give a touch to Booker Ross. And he gets close to the first down. Team with 47 freshmen on it. As Paul told you, kind of had to reset, take a step back, realize that what the expectations had become, and as good as they had been, probably unrealistic that you should win a national championship every year. With that fresh perspective, here they are, less than a minute from another title. And it really got them to go back to, hey, our goal is to win our conference. That is what we talk about. Playoffs, national championships will take care of themselves. we got to focus on winning our conference first. Coach 
slide for He's uh, coaching his 100th game today, his sixth stag bowl. And there's another Gatorade back. We might have just got him with a water, actually. They got him, though. Yeah, whatever it is, it's cold. <laughs> Good thing he has a shell on. They got him twice, actually. He had it zippered up. Family giving him hugs. That is great. What a low key and humble guy, huh? Yeah. means. Yeah. Really gave so much credit to his staff and what they've been able to do with this team. And this Whitewater program, one season after missing the playoffs, goes 14 and 0 to get back to the title game and dominates Division III's most dominant program for its fourth title in the last five years. Handy Mount Union, its worst loss in four decades. And we go to Paul, who's with the winning coach. How's that Gatorade feel? Oh, it felt good. That second one got me really good down the back, but I'll take it. Boy, I couldn't be more proud of what this group has done this year, the way we battled and came out and finished this thing today. Coach, you faced the number one offense in the nation, Mount Union. They averaged 49 points a game. You held them scoreless in the second half. Describe the play of your defense. Well, that, that's the way they played all year, Paul. They really have played well. You know, we gave them that short one there early. I, again, I'm Brian Boyle, our defense coordinator, our defensive staff, have played excellent, put a group out there that played excellent all year long. Matt Barron's in the passing game, four touchdowns. Why was he so successful today? Well, I think, again, Andy Cole, Nicky, would have been great. Matt, Matt made great decisions. We thought we could get some matchups. I thought we did a great job of moving Jay Coomer around so they could double up. That happened to us last week. And, uh, again, it worked out real well. Coach, you didn't make the playoffs last year. You have 47 freshmen on your team. In the offseason, what made you think this moment could be possible? I don't know if I did, Paul, to be honest with you. But then again, this group of seniors really took charge, especially when we hit the postseason. They, they really they, they called a players-only meeting. They talked about what this was going to be out about, and they weren't going to be denied. Enjoy it with your team, Coach. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, and thank you to ESPN U for doing the game. Thank you. All right, Paul, that's a great point he makes. One of the two touchdowns the nation's top offense scored came with a drive that started at the five because of a bad snap. 52 to 14. Whitewater dominates Mount Union for the national title. The ESPN Bowl preview show is coming up next, but tune in right now to ESPN3.com for live coverage of the trophy ceremony. It's Wisconsin Whitewater's trophy ceremony for the fourth time in the last five years.
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 50-yard line presenting the Division III National Championship Trophy is the chairman of Division III Football Championship Committee, Dewey Nats. On behalf of the committee and the NCAA, congratulations, Coach Leopold and the University of Wisconsin Whitewater Warhawks. Congratulations. Whitewater Nation right now. Well, thank you to everyone who came out and everyone back home that watched us. This team was set on a mission. They never gave up. And they came out today and they finished it off. Thank you very much. Coach, the story this season was your defense. Today was your offense, though. What made this unit so effective offensively today, putting up over 50 points in this championship game? Well, I, I think it was our ability to, to, to stay together, have some balance, be aggressive, take some shots downfield early in the game. You could see the talent we had at receiver. It opened up some things for Jordan Radliff, and Matt Barrett did an excellent job operating that offense. Can't forget about this defense. 13 points total in the fourth quarter all season long. What made that unit tick? Well, again, they, they stuck together. You could see when we moved that group of linebackers played well. Our corner play was excellent all year. And you could see how that front four really took over in fourth quarters all year, and they did it again here today. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations to you and your team. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the game most outstanding player is J.P. Williams. The most outstanding player for the 21st Stag Bowl in Salem, quarterback Matt Barrett. You know, we worked our asses off in the offseason, and we got back. We got back, man. Why was the passing game so effective today? Four touchdowns by you, hitting those receivers all day. I mean, I got the best receivers in the nation. Offensive line blocked the whole game. Did a great job, and uh, we got to give credit to everybody. We'll give credit to your defense, too. What's it like going against them in practice every day? Hey, going against the best every day gets us prepared. Got to love it. Congratulations, Matt. Where's Cole Klotz? Where's Cole? Let's bring in Cole. Cole, Mount Union came in averaging 49 points a game. You held them scoreless in the second half. What do we need to know about this defense and what makes you guys go? This team, this, this defense is a brotherhood, man, and I, I, I couldn't ask for a better family. I saw an emotional moment at the end of the game, a big hug with Coach Leipold. Describe your emotions. It, I, I don't even think it's set in, in, to be real. I mean, it's, I couldn't ask for a better, for a better situation to be in. Congratulations, you're a national champion, Cole. Congratulations to the 2013 National Champions, Wisconsin Whitewater. And they do it, Paul, in absolutely dominating fashion as we welcome you back inside the broadcast booth one last time. Dave Diaz Infante, Joe Davis. It was a complete performance all around for Wisconsin Whitewater. Well, you start defensively, four takeaways, and then offensively, Matt Barron was outstanding with the football. Coach talked about the balance they displayed. He took care of the football. Four touchdowns, efficient with it. They are able to run the football, and they took some shots down the field early. Knew that they were going to challenge the defensive backs from Mount Union. So overall, the offense was effective. This is a championship caliber football team on both sides of the ball. So for the fourth time in the last five years, National champs. Mount Union can't figure these guys out. Mount 
Scout Union has now lost five games since 2006 began. They're all to Wisconsin Whitewater. That long trip back home to Wisconsin gonna seem a lot quicker for Lance Leipold and this team, national champions in 2013.